Hey everyone, welcome to Frame and Flow. In today's exciting tutorial, we're going to learn how to generate our character using text, add animations to it, and bring it into Spline. Let's get started. The first thing we need is our 3D character. To create that, we're going to use an AI website called Meshi. This website offers a free plan, which we are using, and you can create a few 3D models with the credits they provide. If you look at the website, you'll see a lot of detailed 3D models and characters created by the community. Some of these models are really impressive, so you can explore the community section for inspiration. Now we're going to create our character using Meshi's text-to-3D tool. After navigating to that section, you'll see the interface. On the left-hand side, there's a panel that controls the mesh you want to create. The first section is the prompt, where you describe the model you want to generate. Next, you select the AI model, either Meshi 4 or Meshi 3, the older version. Then you can choose from three art styles, Realistic, Sculptural, which gives a stone-like texture, or PBR, for photorealistic rendering with albedo, normal, and roughness maps. We can also adjust the target poly count. With the free plan, you can choose between 10K and 30K polygons. You can also select the topology, either quads, which are great for 3D modeling and rendering, or triangles, which are better for gaming. Additionally, you can toggle symmetry on or off, or let the AI decide automatically. In the middle of the screen, you'll see the progress of the 3D model you're creating. For demonstration purposes, let's write a prompt, for example, Deadpool character. After finishing writing, click Generate. The 3D model will take a couple of minutes to generate, so while we're waiting to see the final result, let's explore some of the results we created before. As you can see, each time you generate a model, it gives you four variations, and you can choose one of them and texture it. For example, I created a model of a female deer with sunglasses. Texturing can sometimes have minor issues. As you can see, there are a few errors with the character's head, but usually 80% of the time the results are good and you don't need to regenerate the texture. Here are the other 3D characters that we made. Now that our Deadpool character is ready, you can preview it in four different versions. If you're satisfied with one of them, you can click Texture and it will start generating the texture, which also takes a couple of minutes. As you can see, the texture is created and you can view the finished model on the right side of the screen. The details are impressive and it looks beautiful. To download the 3D model, on the right-hand side, there's a download panel where you can choose various formats, but we'll choose the FBX format for download. After downloading, you'll receive a zip file, which contains the object and its texture. Since we use the deer and not Deadpool, let's use the model I previously created. If you want similar results, you can use the same prompt I used. The deer model is in a T-pose, which is ideal for the next step, adding animation. Now we'll move to the next tab, where we'll add animations using Mixamo. Mixamo is a website with a library of animations that you can apply to your character to bring it to life. After signing up, you'll see an interface where you can upload your character. Click on Upload and drag and drop your file. It takes a few seconds to process the character. Once it's done, you'll see a preview. You then use markers to identify different parts of the model. You can see a guide on where to put the markers on the right-hand side. After we're finished, we just click Next. Now the character is imported, and you can apply an animation by simply clicking on it from the left side of the screen.
There are a few settings for each animation that you can adjust to customize the movement further. To find an animation, if we want a running animation, for example, we can search for run. As you can see, we can choose from various options. One important thing is that if you want the character to run in place, click the in place option. When you're happy with the animation, click download and you'll see an export tab. Here we choose the FBX format and click download. You can also add more animations to your character. For example, let's choose a dance animation. This time in the download tab, we choose animation without the skin. We'll explain how you can use this in spline in a bit. Now that our character is ready and we have our animations, let's bring the files into spline. To import the character, just drag and drop the downloaded files into spline. And there you have it. If you want to test the animation, go to the file and click on the animation. As you can see, it works as expected. One issue you might encounter is that the character's position changes when playing the animation. To fix this, just move the character's feet back to the zero position on the y-axis, so it doesn't jump when you're playing the animation. Now that we have our running animation on the character, we can add another animation. Simply click the plus button and choose the second animation, which is the dance one we downloaded without the skin. Now you can see the dance animation appears in this section, and you can apply both animations to the character. You can add as many animations as you want with this method. Now that we have everything in place, we just need to create our character's material. Simply upload the texture you downloaded from Meshi and apply it to the model in Spline. Now our character is fully textured and ready to use in your project. Now, let's quickly see how the finished project was made. Let's start with the materials. The floor has a sandy look, which I achieved using a few layers. I started with the color layer as a base, then added a noise layer for detail. If I turn off all of the layers, you can see that we only have a light brown color layer. Then I applied a mask to fade it out at the edges and blend with the background. The mask is a simple gradient layer with a radial type. Then there's a lighting layer to which we apply the same mask. And finally, a Voronoi noise texture with multiply as a blending mode to add more depth. For the button materials, I used Spline's glass material and just changed the color of the Fresnel to blue. Then I added a color layer and used a black and white image as a mask. Here is one of the images we've used. Using this mask, we created the silhouette on the button, giving it the final look. Now let's see what happens in the second state, which is when you click on the button. I just changed the color to green and scaled the button up. Then, I created the mouse down event. Here, we have five actions. One action is triggered when we click on the button. As you can see, the target is the selected button, which is jump. And we transition from the current state to the selected state in 0.15 seconds. The next action is an animation action, where we simply chose the corresponding animation for the selected button which again is the jump. To make it more clear, let's select the deer file. If you look at the animations, you see we have four different versions, running, jumping, dancing, and walking. That's why in the animation actions, we use the jump animation for the jump button. 
Now let's explain what the other three transition actions do by going into play mode. You see that when we select a button, it goes to the selected state. But when we select another button, the previous button that was selected goes back to its base state. That's why we need those other three transitions. These actions ensure that when we click on one button, the other three go back to their base state. If you look at the transitions, the targets of each one are different buttons. So when we click on the jump button, for example, it takes the other three buttons back to their base state. Finally, we made these buttons children of the camera. So when we orbit around the scene, they always stay in front of the camera. You can find the project link in the description and you can explore it to better understand the structure yourself. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please let me know. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. That's it for today's tutorial. As you can see, it's very easy to create your own character, add animations, and import it into Spline. If you create your own animations and characters, please share them with us. Don't forget to subscribe to see future tutorials. Thanks for watching and take care.